In this video, I'm going to show you how to whiten ice in Photoshop. Hi, welcome back to the Photoshop Training Channel. I'm Jesus Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to whiten ice in Photoshop. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you about selections, masking, and targeted adjustments. These are all essential retouching techniques that you should know. Okay, let's get started. We're going to work with this document. It obviously contains two eyes. And the first step is to isolate the white of the eyes so that we can work with them. And what I'm going to do is first zoom in into this eye. And I tap the Z key to select the zoom tool. So we're going to focus on this eye in this tutorial. In your own image, of course, use both eyes. But for the sake of time, we're just going to focus on one eye. So I'm going to zoom in and we're going to work with this eye. So I will select the elliptical marquee tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag to make a selection. And I'm looking at the top part of the eye, at the arch. And by holding the space bar, you can move the selection. I'm still holding down the mouse button. So I'm holding down the mouse button to create the selection. Then I can hold the space bar to pan and move around that selection after I'm making it. So I'm just looking for this curvature right here, right on top of the eye. And that's what I'm trying to select, just the top part of the eye. I don't have to be very precise then I can release. Then I can hold Alt Shift. Notice that when I do that, that minus sign on the cursor turns into an X when I hold Shift. So I'm holding Alt and then I press Shift and I get that X. That icon means that I'm going to intersect that selection. So now I'm going to make a selection on the bottom part of the eye. So I'm going to click and drag to make that selection. I can also use the space bar. So now I'm holding three keys. I'm holding the shift key, the alt key, which is the option key in the Mac and the space bar. And now I'm trying to match the bottom part of the eye. I'm going to release the space bar and get as close as I can to the bottom part of the eye like so. And I know this may seem a little complicated using all those keyboard shortcuts, but with practice, it should become very easy. Then I'm going to remove the iris. So I'm going to hold alt option in the Mac and that subtracts from the selection. So I'm going to click and drag and then use the space bar to pan around. And once again, you don't have to be very precise and just release once you're done. So now you've selected the white of the eyes. I missed this area here, but I can easily add to it by clicking on the lasso tool, holding shift and clicking and dragging around that area to select it like so. Now we're going to use a hue and saturation adjustment layer to whiten the eyes, but you can actually use a curves adjustment layer a selective color adjustment layer or pretty much any other adjustment layer that you want. But in this case, the hue and saturation adjustment layer will give us good results. So I'm going to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And you'll notice that the selection disappeared. If I hold alt option on the Mac and click on the layer mask thumbnail, you can actually see the layer mask white reveals black conceals. That means that the white areas are going to reveal the effect that this adjustment layer applies and the black areas will conceal it. I'm going to hold Alt option on the Mac again and click on that layer mask thumbnail. And I'm going to click on the actual adjustment layer thumbnail and I'm going to decrease the saturation and then increase it. And notice that only those areas are affected. What I'm going to do now is make an extreme adjustment just so that you can see what's going on. Obviously, this is not a very good look, but it'll help me illustrate the next point. I'm going to click on the layer mask thumbnail again, and I'm going to use the feather slider in the properties panel. Notice that when I drag the feather slider, it blurs the edge of that selection. So just refine it accordingly in your image. Then I can double click to the side of the layer and we're going to use the blend if options. If you don't know what blend if is, then I have a video where I talk just about those sliders. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail in this tutorial, but realize that you have that resource in case you need it. So basically, you can hide pixels by using the luminosity of this layer or the underlying layer. If I click and drag the underlying layer slider, you'll see how I can bring out the darker pixels. See that? The eyelashes and other areas of the eye. Notice that the transitions are very sharp. So I can hold Alt, Option in the Mac, click and split those in half to create smoother transitions. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's why I wasn't very precise when I first started creating the selections, because I knew that I was going to use these masking techniques to refine it. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is actually work on 
making the white of the eyes brighter and whiter. So I'm going to click on the reset button, this one here, to reset that adjustment layer. And when retouching, you always want to make subtle adjustments. In this tutorial, I'm probably going to push it just a bit too far just so that the changes are noticeable. But remember that when you're working on something like this, keep the changes subtle. Anyway, I'm going to reduce the saturation to try to remove some of the red in the eye. And I'm also going to increase the lightness. So that's before and after. Now, actually, I sort of did things backwards because I wanted to show you the power of working non-destructively. So if you look at this adjustment layer, I can easily disable it and I can make other adjustments. For example, I can create a new layer above the eyes layer and I can use the spot healing brush tool to remove some of the red veins in the eyes. To do so, make sure that you have sample all layers checked and you can simply start painting to remove them. Now, usually I don't like to use this tool with the default settings, so I'm going to undo that by pressing Control, Alt, Z, Command, Option, Z in the Mac. And that's because you can get better results by using the modes. So I usually use one of two, Darken or Lighten. And again, I have a tutorial on this specific tool and about those two modes. I'm not gonna go into detail now, but that resource is also available down below if you're interested. But anyway, I usually use one of two choices, darken or lighten. And the way that I decide which of the two I use is by looking at the blemish that I'm trying to remove or the distraction or whatever it is that I'm trying to remove. In this case, the red veins, are they darker or brighter than their background? In this case, they're darker, so I want to lighten them. So I'm going to select lighten and I'm just going to start painting. And in my opinion, it gives us a much better result. And again, if you watch that tutorial I reference, I show you different examples that sort of prove my point. But anyway, in this case, I'm just going to remove these red veins really quickly. That's before and after. And I can enable the hue and saturation adjustment layer so that you can see the result. If I double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen, you can see the result. I'm going to select the heel layer and I'll call it heel just so that we know what that is. Then I'm gonna hold shift and click on the top layer to select them both. Press control G, command G on the Mac. And I'll call this group white. And you can see the before and the after. And I actually wanna show you one more trick with layer masks. So what I'm gonna do now is expand this group. And obviously this layer mask is controlling the adjustments of this particular layer. But if we wanted to create a separate layer mask to have more control of what areas are being affected, I can press Control G, Command G in the Mac to put that adjustment layer in its own group. And I'll just call it Adjustment. Then I can create a layer mask on that group and then paint with black in areas where I want to hide the effect, maybe here in the corner of the eye. So it looks a little bit more realistic. So now this adjustment layer, and I'll expand this so that you can see it better. Now this adjustment layer has the layer mask on its own layer and also a second layer mask on the group that only contains that adjustment layer. That way you have more control of how that whitening effect is applied to the different areas of the eye. And the reason that you would want to do this is so that you can have the flexibility of having a layer mask that selectively targets different areas and also a layer mask that targets the entire eye. That way you don't have to redo the original layer mask if you decide to change your mind and you also can delete the new layer mask and come back to the original. And before we finish the tutorial I just want to ask you one question. In the comments down below let me know where you're watching from. I recently came back from two conferences one in Malaysia and another one in Mexico and I was surprised to see that I had PTC fans in those places so I'm really curious to know where you are watching from so let me know in the comments down below. By the way, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop Training Channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again in the next tutorial.